This is Kim and Neil with Geauga Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. Today we have a really cool video for you. We've been doing a series on red dots. We also have a red dot class coming up. So if you're interested, make sure you check that out where we're gonna go over uh, some of these tips and so much more fun drills and things like that. So today we're gonna talk about red dot failure. Recently came back from a several day training for uh, red dot instructors for police and it was really fantastic. Um, <clears throat> I learned a lot of cool things. So this is one that uh, really one of the big takeaways was what happens if the red dot fails and so we talk about that a lot about co-witness which we'll do in another video in my opinions on what's the best co-witness or do you need a co-witness at all even what does it mean uh, as far as iron sights go so we kind of say well we have a red dot and if things go down we have uh, iron sights but here's the issue with that we fundamentally change what we're doing when we're using a red dot. So fundamentally, the way that we shoot is different with red dots as it is with iron sights, and that's one of the big advantages. So instead of having three things that we have to line up, a rear sight, a front sight, a target, and focus on the front sight, changing our focus from the target to the front sight, we don't need to do any of that. With a red dot, we just stay focused on the target and superimpose the dot. But what if the dot doesn't work? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do, and you guys can do this at home. Don't do this with a gun, do this with your thumb. So Kim is gonna demonstrate this here in a second. Really what it is is we're, we're ghosting the image of the actual gun so that we can see through it it's very cool so what Kim's gonna do here she's gonna put her thumb up here and we've used this demonstration many times so this is the first time in the instructor class we kind of put this together and came up with this concept which is really cool so Kim has two options from a focal point of view one Kim can look at the color of her, of her uh, nail paint and stuff like that and if she does that, it'll be crystal clear, as you can see, correct? That's correct. But the, tar the camera, the target, whatever's behind her, it's all going to be, or in front of her, rather, that's all going to be blurry because she can only focus on one point. So now Kim's going to focus on the camera itself, right on the lens, but she's going to keep her thumb in her field of view with both eyes open, and she's going to stay focused right on the lens. And what do you see with your thumb when you do that, it's, Kim? It's crazy, but it literally, like, mirrors the two images, and your thumb almost becomes translucent. Correct. It's crazy. So you guys may have heard this term, the bender effect. Uh, you probably, if you've been to any red dot, red dot, if you've been to a red dot class, I'm sure at some point they put uh, masking tape or something over the, the front of the lens so you can see the dot, but you can't see through it. And then you're like, wow, I can still see the dot superimposed because what happens is the brain has obviously two eyes, two inputs. It takes the, t the dot itself, input one, but it can't see through it. It takes the other eye, which can see the target, input two, and it goes and puts them together. So essentially, that's what we're doing. And when we do this properly, one, we have to, key, 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 we have to stay focused on the target. If you start trying to look for the dot, which we never want to do, or your thumb, or anything else, or the gun itself, you will see exactly that mm -hmm. and nothing else. But what we need to see is that invisible gun. For those that are interested, we're going to use Kim's new instructor gun, which is the new Walther PDP. This is the 5.1 inch uh, Pro with the sweet trigger in it. And we're using Fiocchi ammo. No, Fiocchi did not provide us with any ammo. So here's what we're going to show you. I'm going to take the dot and I'm going to turn it off. I mean, I guess you could say I'm going to use some special, you know, tricks and turn it back on and edit the video. I guess you have to believe me. But come on over here and I will show you first off the dot. This one happens to be red. So there you go. There's the red dot. Then I'm going to turn this guy off. All right, I just wanted to verify it is off, so you can see through the glass there's no dot. So this is gonna obviously simulate the fact that the dot is not working. Okay, now that I have the dot off, what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna gun. I'm gonna use the Canic as a great example because it has a visual striker. So as long as you guys can see this red dot right here, that's the striker. That's basically what I'm gonna be using. Now the Walther does not have a visible striker. It doesn't matter. I'm basically just using the back plate. I just happen to grab the Canic because this is just a great example of what I'm actually looking for. And when you think about it, there's no mechanical offset whatsoever. The dot, instead of being here and then the bore being here, I'm literally looking pretty much at the bore. So I'm gonna show you what this is gonna look like here. When I go and put this gun up here, again, the key is I'm gonna keep both of my eyes open. It's gotta be the deal. And I gotta be looking at the target. If I do anything different than that, I will not get that effect, meaning I will just either look at the back of my gun or I'll be looking at the target, but I will not be able to get that kind of translucent image like you do with your thumb. So what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna drive the gun out, natural point of aim like I would normally have. I'm gonna point at the target. 
and I'm gonna use the back plate as my center line. So I'm just gonna basically imagine, and if you wanted to get creative and put a little dot on your back plate and whatever you're shooting, uh, you know, just as a visual reference, um, certainly you could use this. Again, the concept here is everything applies for the dot is going to apply for this technique. So I'm still using uh, target focus the whole nine yards. So let me put some ears on. So now I have my target here. Again, we're gonna make sure we're loaded up, ready to go. I have the dot completely off, as you saw. The film's been around this whole time. And so all I'm gonna do in order to shoot this is I'm gonna drive the gun out like I normally do. I'm looking at the back plate of the gun and I'm shooting. All right, come over here. You're gonna see my three shots are right here. I had one here, uh, and this was uh, my mistake then when I came out. But these three shots, again, have no dot. This is just me using the back plate of the gun to use as a reference. Then I'm just gonna verify my dot is back, which it is, beautiful. So we're using the same concepts again. Just to reiterate, same concept of drawing out the gun like a natural do, natural point, whatever is working for you, keep working that. The only difference is instead of going to the dot, and you'll be able to see kind of the height of the gun, this is the dot right on the target, and then with, I'm gonna assume I can't see the dot, then I would superimpose the back plate right there. So you can see the height difference. There's the dot, and there's the back plate. Whatever that, whatever you could see there is, is the only difference. And again, I'm shooting exactly where the bore axis actually is. So very cool technique. Um, we'll get into co-witnessing of actual iron sights with dots and what I think of that. There's another super cool technique that we're gonna talk about on another video in case it fails. But for this one right now, if your dot goes down, you can have all the same shooting fundamentals with uh, a dot. We hope you guys really enjoyed that tip and trick. It's something that you can incorporate in your training because you gotta think this would be something you would use if like it was a life or death situation, like close distance. We're not talking about hitting a quarter from you know 25 yards, right? Correct. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like we said, we do have a red dot class coming up, so check that out. Um, if you did enjoy it, leave us a like, a thumbs up, a share, a comment, share it with people who are having trouble with finding that dot or concerned with switching. Click the bell. <laughs> click that bell so you get notified every time we put a video out. Um, you can find us here on YouTube, Facebook. We have a channel on Rumble. We have Instagram. And of course, we have Patreon where we put content that we only put there nowhere else. Until next time, remember, it's always, always better, better to be judged, judged by, by 12, 12 than carried by 6.